Max, it's so great being with you here on Vieques in Puerto Rico at F2XI, the Physics of Information Conference. How do we deal with the physics of information? What is it and why is it important? We used to think it was utterly unimportant. We used to think information was just some sort of sideshow that statisticians liked that had very little to do with, with physics. And then, remarkably, information has started to crop up in area after area of physics in a very fundamental level. We've come to learn that in quantum mechanics, many of the deepest theorems in question can be rephrased in terms of information. And the whole field of quantum computing is about harnessing a new kind of information, quantum information, to do things we previously thought were impossible. Then in uh, relativity theory, in our attempt to unify that with, with, with quantum mechanics and do quantum gravity, information has again seemingly cropped up as super important and that there seems to be a magic bound called the holographic principle on how much information you're allowed mm -hmm. to store you know, in a given region of space. On a third front, we have a lot of newer scientists here at our conference now who are arguing that studying information processed in physical systems is also the master key to understanding one of the deepest mysteries of all, that of consciousness. So this really makes me wonder if one of my greatest heroes, John Archibald Wheeler, was right when he talked about it from bit and argued that maybe information is not just some coincidental little thing, but maybe information is really, truly fundamental. And maybe it's even more fundamental than matter and energy and space so that we can maybe ultimately either understand how those things we thought were the building blocks of physics emerge from information or at least unify everything with information. So do, do you see this as, um, a, as a trend uh, where information was just something that was uh, casual, then it became critical to understand the physics and ultimately it may be the ground of physics? It certainly seems to me like that's the way the wind has been blowing for, for a long time in physics. So the idea that I had together with my co-conspirator here, Anthony Aguirre, was to bring together physicists and other scientists working at the forefront of many different areas of science that were all focused on the role of information mm. and trapped them here on this small island where they had no choice but to talk with each other in the hope that this sharing of ideas would, would help them realize, aha, maybe there are deep connections here. What are some of the deep connections that could be there? For example, we have a lot of people trying to build quantum computers or trying to study the role of information flow in complicated physical systems that occur when you put together a lot of particles. And then you have the neuroscientists who are trying to figure out why we feel conscious. Interestingly, these, these two separate communities have both started talking more and more about the role of information in what they do, and, and sometimes they even use the same words, mm. like mathematical shapes, or they talk about entropy and information flow and integration of information. And that, my gut is just telling me that that means that if these, if these two communities of people can talk with each other more, they're ultimately they're going to realize that they're studying two different sides of the same coin. And when you look at some of the critical elements that are being studied in uh, physics today on the frontier in quantum gravity, unifying general relativity and quantum mechanics, uh, what's the role of information? For example, um, we used to think that what Einstein was telling us was there's a speed limit. You can't move stuff faster than light. And quantum mechanics muddies the water a lot on that. And, but we realize that there is still something that we can't move faster than light, and it is information. Mm. We have had passionate ar arguments here about what happens when you fall into a black hole and when black holes evaporate and what happens in the distant realms of our cosmos. And the word that keeps coming up the most frequently again in these d debates and discussions is information. You know, like, is information destroyed or is information always preserved as if it were a physical quantity, like energy. Mm. And uh, I think uh, whatever we ultimately learn and conclude about these matters, there's one thing I'm quite confident about, which is that information is going to play a key role in the answer.